you see this and this and this as I navigate through this catacetony roots die when they go into dormancy and more debunking video I would like to draw your attention to the dates on the top left hand of your screen because they will show that what I'm going to be talking about is not a one-off occurrence but that growing catacetony year in year out without repotting while maintaining viable roots throughout dormancy if there even is one which I will also touch upon does work and the proof will be shown throughout the footage of this video. I am so glad that Richard Lawton asked me to do a video about this in the comments of my Dendrobium Nobly debunking video. Great minds is all I can say. It made me chuckle because I was thinking about going all in with a catacetone debunking video, but wasn't entirely sure if it would be well received. <clears throat> So, thank you Richard Lawton, <laughs> let's do this. The purpose of this video is not to sound my own trumpet, but to give you the opportunity to broaden the horizon on how to grow catacetinae without having to be their server for eight months of the year, unless you are in a climate in which catacetinae may just not go dormant at all, then happy growing is all I can say, and I will have a side of envy should yours not go dormant because of your environment. What I'm also going to do is stop you from making the mistake I made with my Cygnodes Jumbo Mickey, which I destroyed in the same semi-hydroponic setup as my other two are, but I went by the principle of these orchids need a lot of fertilizer during their active growing period. I ran with that. My orchid was growing more and more structures every year, and I overdid the fertilizer, which in turn ended up decimating my Jumbo Mickey. So we're going to touch upon the dangers of not just semi-hydroponics as a culture for catacetinae, I will cover the organic side of it as well because my mistake with my Jumbo Mickey can also be made with organic media growing. The thumbnail is the giveaway and welcome to another debunking video this time addressing catacetinae care. It's good to have you here. The successful semi-hydroponic culture of the other two catacetinae that I have is proof that you do not need to repot your orchid every year. The roots do not die off during the dormancy period and with that in past videos I have always said please do not cut off any root system and store the bulbs without media until a new growth appears because the orchid always has to start from scratch to regrow a new root system year in year out. On top of that nice little side effect is you save yourself a lot of media and of course a lot of work. Now of course a repot is necessary every now and then but to do it every year let me save you a lot of work a lot of media and let me save your orchid from the stressors that come with this radical intervention every time it wakes up. When using organic media we always go with the principle it is a wet dry cycle culture for the most part but when these orchids come into active growth best practice with these orchids is to never have their media dry out because of how fast they grow and how much fertilizer they need. So going to the orchid lingo video on belayment and root behavior in general, once the watering of the root system starts in earnest, the roots of the active growing season are used to having a lot of moisture around them on a continuous basis. And with that, the belayment is accustomed to being damp all the time. Never mind that the characteristics of the belayment around catacetiny roots is paper thin to begin with. There isn't a lot of belayment layer ring that some orchid roots have. That is why they are so prone to failing if watered too soon. But now think of these roots having been in their wet pot for eight months and suddenly the water supply is reduced and eventually cut off. Then yes, the root system will die because the conditions have changed, not because that is what they would normally do if they were in their native habitat. As growers who let their media go bone dry during the dormancy period, we are the ones killing off the root system and there is no need to do that if you don't want to be repotting your catacetinae every year anymore. It doesn't take heavy watering to keep these roots alive throughout their dormancy period because they are not taking up that much moisture so it's it suffices to just keep the media shy of drying out completely by providing a little water to the surface of the pot every once in a while. If you see condensation in your pot, you have the right moisture level and won't need to water. I'm not saying that you should drench the pot during this time period, but keep it just damp enough and stop it from drying out. You can carry over a viable root system that is ready to go when your orchid breaks dormancy with the new growth. Prior to even having new roots starting on that new growth. 
Your orchid will also benefit from the fact that the back bulbs will not go into any form of stressful shriveling, which is a pointer that many growers bring awareness to. As in, if your back bulbs shrivel, then lightly water the pot to avoid the shriveling from advancing beyond being able to save the back bulbs and depleting them of all their energy. Your back bulbs may show a little sign of shriveling, but nothing dramatic and definitely nothing that is going to cause them to fail while the new growth gets its grow on. Let me show you what happened with my catacetinae after I repotted them for the first time. And yes, I divided them at that stage as well, but it makes my case even more solid because dividing these orchids is so easy, so much fun, they're expensive, and being able to gift back bulbs to friends for them to enjoy the orchid is a double win. So usually we see these orchids with several back bulbs if we're lucky and no roots maybe a new growth, and then the media goes in and we wait. Well, these are classic examples of how stressful it can be for these orchids to grow a new growth, new roots, using the back bulbs as the energy supply for all the heavy lifting until it is time to water again. And never mind how stressful it is for a grower to watch the structure shrivel, not being allowed to water because the new roots aren't mature enough, and well, it's just panic stations all around. I don't want to put myself through that every year and definitely do not want to put my orchids through that every year either. Granted, some hybrids are more capable of withstanding such stress and don't have a problem plumping up the back bulbs once watering can commence in earnest, but there are some that just don't handle this radical recharge very well and stall with their root growth before the roots are even long enough to absorb water. Which one is which? I find that to be a little bit too far experimental in my eyes because it can be a very risky enterprise to bring the supposed big bulbs through without losing them first and possibly losing the whole orchid or only managing to grow a smaller growth in the hopes that the next season will be better if you don't repot the orchid again. And while I have large catacetinae to show you, not all catacetinae have these large bulbs, making the compacter varieties even more vulnerable to failure. And you can avoid that by not repotting every year. So as many mentioned, my hybrid took the dividing and repot somewhat well, but the stress of the recovery was still such that while the back bulbs did plump up a little bit, they never recovered fully. Thankfully though, this orchid was bred to withstand such duress. However, my jack of diamonds was the total opposite and it objected to being divided, repotted and to wait, etc. To the point, it stalled with a new root growth the following year. And look at how those pseudobulbs shriveled and look, I did not have any roots progressing. I even cut the spikes in 2023 once the orchid was somewhat established again and the roots had finally started to absorb some water. I cut off the female spike that wanted to bloom as per the season as well as the male spike during the dormancy period. Only two years after the intervention did this orchid bounce back to where I was comfortable to let both spikes bloom as they should. My point being, this is not something I want to do every year. And if you feel as though your catacetinae can grow better and possibly benefit from not being repotted every year, instead it's coming into active growth with a viable root system, then by all means, keep your media slightly damp throughout their dormancy period and carry a fully functional viable existing root system into the next season and see for yourself if your orchid doesn't do a lot better. And you will benefit from not having to panic. <laughs> That's always a good thing in my opinion. Anyway, as I started this video out discussing organic media while showing you my self-watering setup throughout, you can see where I'm coming from because my media is never left to go bone dry, even during the winter months. While I do not have any water in the reservoir, I make sure that my microfiber always stays damp. And if that means flushing the pot with a little water, again, not drenching the pot, then that is what I will do on occasions just to maintain the media damp so that it does not start drawing moisture out of the roots because the characteristics of lecca is to pull moisture out of anything it comes into contact with. A pot full of lecca allowed to go bone dry will result in the lecca drawing moisture out of the roots and that would be the end of the root system as well as what dry organic media would do with roots that were wet for eight months of the year. Roots that grew in a consistently wet pot now suddenly having nothing. They will also collapse. No matter your choice of media, reintroducing water to the pot still has to 
to be respected so that the new root system has a chance to mature. That doesn't change. If you want your orchid to double or triple the amount of roots it has in the pot by not losing the new root system, then here's what I do with my setup so as to protect the new roots from failing while still maintaining a damp pot for the older roots. When the new roots show and they are just about to hit the surface of the media, I gently flush my pot through one last time, same as I did throughout the winter. I am not soaking the pot, just enough to keep the media damp and then I do not provide any more water until I see the roots are long enough and mature enough to start doing what they are supposed to do. Now, you're probably thinking, well, she cannot see the roots in her pot. How would she know when they are long enough? Well, Catacetinae being epiphytic will have some roots that just do not find their way into the media and those are the ones that I take advantage of. Knowing that what is growing into the pot may grow a little faster than what I see growing outside of the pot and the fact that when I see a certain length reached with the aerial roots, I then test their maturity by misting them. And if the velamen changes color, voila! we are good to go. Then, my first couple of waterings are only filling my reservoir to half full. I observe how long it takes to be absorbed and repeat. Only half full. I do not water from above until the new growth has leafed out but steadily increase the water level in the reservoir until the moment arrives and I can just fill it to capacity. And this little song and dance can take up to five weeks before it is going to be too tough to keep up with the orchid's needs and ensure that there is consistent access to water. Those are the fun months. The watering from below is also what I recommend for growers of this genus who prefer organic media because because organic media wicks as well when it gets wet. I would only administer the smallest amount of water in a dish to be soaked up by the pot and if the entire pot doesn't get wet then that's perfect. It's like a tease for the new roots to search out the damp media and the older roots are taking in the water without having to wait for the new roots to start doing their thing. So this may sound confusing to listen to, but I sincerely hope that it wasn't. Before I move on with what I highly recommend you do not do, no matter how you grow your catacetinae, let me just reiterate that you do not have to repot your orchids every year, you do not have to cut the old root system off because it will perish anyway, you can and I will always advocate for this, you can maintain healthy viable roots throughout any dormant period without rotting roots and bring them through the next season. In my opinion, this warrants giving this video a thumbs up and definitely share it around so that other growers won't have to stress about the catacetinae bulbs shriveling. <laughs> and take a moment to subscribe to the channel and follow the 2024 growing season of my two catacetinae as well as many many other orchids on the patio thank you so much. Now here is one I would recommend you do not do and that is use slow release fertilizer in your pot just because these orchids are demanding during their active growing period. Unless of course you know exactly what you are doing, have done it for years and never had a problem with it, then who am I to suggest any different? But if you are in any doubt whatsoever as to how much slow release fertilizer to use, then please please do not not use it at all, especially going by the principle of not repotting these orchids every year. The slow release fertilizer will activate the moment it comes into contact with water and your media will wick it up to where the new roots are growing. The new roots that have as yet to mature to be able to absorb water. The two are not compatible. They are not a match made in heaven. The slow release fertilizer concentration will be far too high and even if the older root system does absorb some of the nutrients, the newer roots will burn. My example is proof. My Jumbo Mickey is no more, no matter how hard I tried to save it. Luckily, and that is all I will say about that because it was pure luck that Jumbo Mickey needed a repot and the others didn't or else they would have had slow release fertilizer in their pots as well. But luckily, the only one that I lost because I went by the principle that these orchids are heavy feeders. And with that, I wanted to support all the structures my Jumbo Mickey was growing, thinking I would not be able to keep up with watering and added the slow release fertilizer. Well, the other two are testament that there is no need for any slow release fertilizer in the pots of Catacetinae, in my opinion, and again, 
unless you know exactly what you are doing, which clearly I did not. But if you do use slow release fertilizer, please, I would love to hear from you and ask you how much do you use and what size is your orchid, as well as what type of media you use, all that fun stuff, because I feel there is another video needed to go into more details as to what happened with mine, when and why. So let me know in the comments. I would love to connect with you and bounce some thoughts around. Thank you so much. And if you're still here, let me thank you because I'm not quite done yet. I'm going to debunk one final thing, and that is the common statement that catacetinae have a dormancy period. And if your orchid is not going dormant, then you can force it into going dormant by cutting the leaves off and denying water. Well, when I hear that, the hairs on the back of my neck stand up because I am not a fan of that concept at all. No offense to anyone that does that, but my stance is, if your climate and your conditions, your temperatures, your light levels are such that a catacetinate just won't go dormant and will hold on to its leaf, starts new growths when other catacetinate and other collections start losing their leaves and go dormant, then consider yourself lucky because it is not not a requirement that all catacetinae go dormant or have to go dormant or should go dormant. And here's the comment that Pat Freud added in the nobly debunking video that made me add this part into this debunking video for catacetinae. There are climates, conditions, light exposure, temperature, etc. that will stop catacetinae from going dormant. So if you are blessed to be in a climate like that, please do not force them to do anything they would not naturally do just because you see other catacetinae going dormant. And look at yours with all the wonderful leaves on them and rejoice. I would if I found myself in such circumstances. <laughs> Let me know if you have any questions. I feel as though this was a lot, but I will wait to hear from you and clarify anything and everything in the comments. Thank you, Richard Lawton. Thank you, Pat Freund, for your comments, your questions. In the meantime, let me thank you for watching. Let me wish you a beautiful day, but without asking, I'm going to attach a condition to that, and that is that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.